Hello. Just came inside from the cold. And I'm sitting in a weird place on the floor. Moving some chairs around so I have room for my legs. But I'm just sitting here with that candle. Just kind of between rooms. Here, having my legs kick things. Huh. Some things I'm supposed to have put away, <laughs> but I have not. But there you have it. But curling up with a candle. from Bart Santello. And, uh, it's still quite cold. Well, this candle's not gonna flicker all that much because it's relatively protected from the moving air, such as there by my breath. I imagine you guys can see that change. But it still flickers. And uh, it's an interesting little candle meditation I do. A lot of people do them where you're looking at the um, candle as a sort of focus for your meditation. Uh, for me, it's more of a mental focus. So the idea of the candle, I don't even have to be looking at it exactly. And, um, so the idea is that um, the candle wavers, it flickers, it moves. Which, of course, is the nice little metaphor for what the mind does, right? And you may not notice it until you go to meditate and you realize how uh, unreadily your mind settles in one place. Just wants to go here, go here, go here, go here. And, uh, you know, normally we, uh, we get disappointed and frustrated and scold the mind and result to start over and that may be what the meditation looks like that monkey mind idea but if we imagine the I say imagine I could just show you the candle but my guess is that it overexposes and even though it's in the frame you won't actually see it so I'll, uh, I'll show you if uh, this is the you know, uh, my whole fist is a candle, and, uh, you know, there's a wick here, and then by the main point here is this, the finger is the flame. So somewhere at the bottom is a wick, and then it's all the, the candle flame. In other words, for this metaphor, you can ignore the, the, most of my hand. We're just interested in the index finger. And so the idea here is that that flame is just doing this, right? No breeze comes by. Somebody walks past it. And then some other subtle unseen current. And the current of the air kind of creates this flickering. So we could say that my fingers moved, but if we remember the, the wick, despite all this flickering, the wickering is not flickering. The wick is in one place. So, going back to the mind, rather than saying to myself, the mind has moved, scold it, 
uh, be disappointed, be frustrated, resolve to start over. Now I'm going to start over, stay there, mind, don't go anywhere, be silent, be quiet, be still. And then, of course, the mind, like the candle, does this. And then I get frustrated and annoyed, uh, challenged and overwhelmed. And I said it again. They say, please do it this time. And that's often what the meditation looks like. But instead, what I can do is notice that if I can establish a wick, then the candle never leaves the wick, although it moves. So it's movement. It's not a wall. It's still connected. So, rather than scolding or being frustrated by any movement of the mind, any flicker of the mind, I can instead give the mind sort of a zone, a topic, a theme of connection or awareness. And then allow or watch the flickering, knowing that it remains connected to a theme. It connects. It remains connected to a thing. It remains in a place. So we could say that my finger is moving, but we could also see that my finger has not gone anywhere. So it's what we might refer to as motion of the finger rather than an ambulatory motion. So it's not movement in the sense of traveling from place to place, but it's in a place and it is moving. So it's alive. And so what I can do is I can fix my mind into a notion, a wick of uh, love or softness or emptiness or release or fullness or wideness, just to pick a few examples. And then allow my mind, watch my mind. When it does that, when it does that nearly invisible, uh, inevitable flicker, know that it's still connected to an unmoving place. This might be a little bit like if you you know, have a kid or a dog or piss something and um, you have a fence in your yard and the fence allows you to realize that the kid can move, the kid can do an infinite number of things in the yard but won't actually be leaving. And there's a certain amount of freedom and relaxation that surrounds the parent or the kid knowing that there's a fence. So there's a limit, there's a boundedness, but within it there's a limitlessness. Within the boundedness there is an infinite number of things. And so that flicker of the mind really hasn't traveled anywhere, although it's been in motion. And so I can tune into the candle and uh, become aware of that. So even here, the candle is in motion, but it hasn't gone anywhere. Of course, you know, the base is, you know, in place, at least relatively speaking. Uh, and so I'm just going to do this meditation, and I'm just going to have the, the candle in my view so that that, that metaphor, that theme, is, is gently reminded and probably pleasantly reminded. I mean, I'm looking at a candle. And I'm not going to try and quiet my mind. I'm just going to let my mind, let the body that cradles the mind rest. And if indeed my mind totally hopscotches, teleports, and, and does in fact move rather than the wicking, then I'll start again like one might expect and say, oh, it's okay. Let's light the candle again. Let's find another wick. 
And I'll find that the the self has a less anxious supervisory relationship of the mind, knowing that it isn't really going anywhere, but it's continually moving the way it does. Although I recommend you do this in a uh, seated position. I'm actually laying across two different floors at a threshold on two different levels that I'm laying so I'm profoundly uncomfortable here. So I'm setting in on one notion, one theme, one focus, if you will. I'm taking a few moments to remind myself that the mind will waver once I'm there. And I'm not to micromanage it, let it flicker. Indeed, we could say that a large part of the aesthetic um, preference that we might have towards the candle compared to, let's say, an electric light is the wavering. I mean, we may find that, you know, the beauty of the candle is that it flickers, it wavers. But it's not a wildfire. There's not a fear around it like a wildfire. It, it does remain where it is. But it's alive in its own movement. So you can pick a theme for the wicking yourself and let the wickering and the flickering live in a uh, quiet way. There's the candle for you. And now I'm going to get up. So thank you all very much.